From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Well, we all know that the presidential election is just around the corner, and this first headline certainly is very important. Can President Obama run on his foreign policy record? Very, very good question. We'll deal with it. And then, you know, Putin has just won the election in Russia. Putin takes back Russia's nuclear button. He's got it in his hand, friends. And Iran may go nuclear later this year. So we'll deal with all of that and much, much more. But before we get into these very serious headlines, uh, Jack told me about a little boy who did always listen to Mama. And in this case, he was listening to somebody else, a sister at the Catholic school, I believe. Jack, uh, a really darling little boy. And this little fellow was going through the lunch line and he saw the apples and he took two of them. And the nun, <laughs> sister, came and said, don't you see that sign? One apple per person and God is watching you. So he put one back and went to the other end of the line where they had all kinds of pastries and cookies. And he said to the kids, hey, take all you want. God's watching the apples. <laughs> oh, Rexella. Okay. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of people reason that way when they sin. Oh, I'm going to get away with it. But they forget that God is not only omniscient, knowing everything, but He's also omnipresent everywhere at all times. And that's why Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Jeremiah 16, 17, Mine eyes are upon all their ways. Hebrews 4, 13, uh, all things are naked and open unto the eyes with God with whom we have to do. And so the Bible says in Numbers 32, 23, be sure your sin will find you out. Remember, one day we have to stand before God. It's called the great white throne judgment of Revelation 20, verses 11 to 15. And if you don't get your sins confessed and have a change of life, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> that sister should elaborate just a little bit more there, I think. Cute little boy, though. I would just like to say that we, as I mentioned up front, the presidential election is really heating up. Don't you admit that? And so many questions, friends, are beginning to emerge. Here's one. Can Obama run on his foreign policy record? Well, that is a good question. Here you see him. For Obama, bin Laden killing becomes a campaign tool. Of course, he is referring to what happened, the success of that. Same-sex marriage should be legal, Obama says. There he is again. And uh, here you see something that's very serious. It has to do with our spending, and he is going forward. But look precipice. at what he's standing on. Well, yes, a precipice, Jack. And Crushed by college debt. Now, massive loan bills are hanging over the heads of our graduates, and it's actually derailing their life plans. One trillion dollars, Rexel. Ooh, and here you see, remember when students could afford, okay, caps and gowns? Oh, my, and certainly it is going on them. Israel is not the threat, Mr. President. Iran is the threat. Very good by John Bolton. And Russia, Syria on brink of civil war. Okay, once again, Obama fiddles while Syria burns. Now that is by Krothheimer, and we will talk about that very much. Trolling for dirt on the president's list. 
Now, the website is telling us that he has uh, searched out some of the supporters of Romney, and he's going to pick up on, whoa, their private lives. And then, the crucify them presidency. In other words, he's going to go after them for supporting Romney. Now, you know, I, I am going to ask Jack some very, very pointed questions here. But that uh, Kratheimer, Jack, I thought was very, very good. Obama fiddles while Syria burns. Would you address that a little bit more, please? The Bible teaches in Isaiah 17, verse 1, that there's an hour coming when Damascus, the capital of Syria, becomes a pile of ashes. And I believe that's when Russia makes the big move across the world and Syria is with them. And of course, Russia and her allies lose as we're going to see in a few moments from now. But ladies and gentlemen, I wanna tell you something. The reason that our president is fiddling while Syria burns is because he knows that Russia already has armaments there. They have their ships waiting as well as China and because Syria is going to go with Russia and China in the war to come, as we're going to see in a few moments from now, as I said, he's afraid what might happen. Same thing with Iran. They may have five weapons, atomic bombs, by the end of the year. And he knows that Russia and China are both saying, don't you dare put any more sanctions on Iran. We are for them. Why? Because in Ezekiel 38, 5, Persia, which changed its name to Iran in 1935, joins Russia for the War of Wars. And Jack, we're going to deal in depth with that in just a moment. But I, I just want to refer to something here, this article. Whoa! It's called Trolling for Dirt on the President's List. In other words, he's going after citizens' private lives if they support Romney and putting it even on a website. Jack, uh, I've never heard of anything quite like that. Before I get into this topic, I want you to know that I love my black brothers and sisters in Christ. I wanted to say that because sometimes you think I'm a little hard on the president. Only when he steps on my toes when it comes to religious issues, believe me. But let me tell you what the Bible has to say about this hit list he has. Mr. President, you claim to be a Christian. What are you going to do with what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 and 28. Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them which curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. How different we are. But God hates certain things we do. And that's over there in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to 18. These six things doth God hate. Seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, an heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sows discord among his brethren. God says in Ephesians 4, 25 to believers, wherefore putting away lying, and we've got some repenting to do. And if we want change in America like you profess to do and haven't done, then we need to get down and practice Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. Mm, my, so well said, Jack. Something else, friends, we're not into politics. Jack and I have voted Republican, Democrat, Independent. We're not into politics, but there are some biblical issues that you must think about and address. They're important in everything that we do, especially even in our voting, if it's a biblical issue. So, Jack, let's go back and forth here, okay? Okay, okay. Some of the things, the biblical things that have come up that I think we need to be reminded of once again, and that was something that happened with the president concerning Catholic issues. The first one on abortion, and the other one when he had them cover the cross when he went to address a Catholic university. Can you believe that? Covering the cross. Those are biblical, Jack. Yeah. He said he would not sponsor the Catholic Church, would not give them funds unless they committed murder. That's what I call it. The Bible says, Thou shalt not kill, Exodus 20, verse 13. 
But he said, I won't do it. Boy, there's been an uproar. Then he went to Georgetown University to speak. Well, the White House called the officials of the school and said, before he'll come and speak, you must cover up the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, Muslims hate the cross. He knew this was going to be broadcast to the world. He's a manipulator, compromiser. Now, folks, anyone who does that about the cross becomes an enemy of the cross of Christ, Philippians 3.18. You know why they don't want to hear about the cross? Because the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. Foolishness. 1 Corinthians 1.18. Oh, Paul could say, I glory only in the precious cross of Jesus. Galatians 6, 14. I'm with you, Paul. Amen. Mm, absolutely. Well, something else happened the day of prayer. Do you remember that? We're referring to some of the things we've already mentioned to you. But uh, they canceled Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham, from even coming to pray for the day of yes. prayer, Jack. He was the director and was to pray and preach. And the Pentagon, again, he uses them. He's a manipulator, says he cannot come because he talked against 9-11. Oh, wasn't that terrible? Who wouldn't talk against 9-11 when 3,000 decent human beings were not only killed, but incinerated by a bunch of murderous thugs, Islamic terrorists, and right now they're on trial and they're doing everything they can to disturb it, and they're even thinking about postponing it, and that's what the president wishes because he can do better in making concessions after the election but these murders aren't going to get 72 virgins. They're going to suffer in hell because Revelation 21, 8 says, the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and whoremongers and murderers and sorcerers and idolaters shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone. Whoa, how serious can you get, friends? Well, something that Jack shared with me not too long ago about the memorial service that they had in Washington for 9-11. I couldn't believe it. All evangelicals were not even allowed to participate, Southern Baptists and so forth, Jack. The second largest denomination in America is the Baptists. The Southern Baptists alone are 18 million strong. And the head of the movement complained. He said, why are we not allowed to have a part? And he knew why, because they were fundamentalists. They stand on the Word of God, they make no bones along with 40 million evangelicals. No part, no part. Why? Because they believe what this book teaches, what Jesus said. It says there is no other way to heaven, and that liberal crowd of few Christians from a few places was happy saying there are many ways to heaven like our president does. Jesus is the only way, yes. He said in John 8, 24, I say unto you, die in your sins if you believe not in me. And what is it about Jesus in which we're to believe? That he's the savior of the world, 1 John 4, 14. That's why Acts 4, 12 says, neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that's the precious name of Jesus. And it's written 400 times in the Word of God. Oh, my, oh, my, Jack. I'm going to combine a couple of things here that has to do with how he does seem to favor the Islamists. And one thing about the building of the mosque there at 9-11, our president is very much in favor of that, and he wants to take Jerusalem and give it to the Palestinians. So two things, Jack. Yes, well, he's totally in favor of the mosque going up there, a Muslim mosque. But there's a Christian church that was destroyed, and for 10 years they were hoping to build near there, and they're being totally ignored, even by the mayor of New York City. But oh, yes, you know what the trouble with that is? 9-11 is a disgrace. I repeat, 3,000 innocent people were killed and incinerated. But they want to call their mosque Cordoba House. Why is that? Because the Muslims, when they went into Spain, destroyed the Christians and took over Cordoba. And they says Cordoba will stand for victory over Christendom. And they're going to put Cordoba House there. God help you, Mr. President. And He's also made concessions with the Palestinians. He says, wait till the election, and then I'll have more freedom. We will make you a state, and 
get this, we will give Jerusalem to you. Jerusalem belongs to the Jews 930 times in this book. Do you believe God's word? And it's also for the Christians. For when Jesus comes back, he sits on David's throne in Jerusalem, ruling the world, Luke 1, 32 and 33. And you know, Jack, that is what I love to think about in a day and age in which we're living, a time when the Lord will come back. He said he'd come. He's going to be coming back, and then we'll know peace on earth like never before. And now, friends, I mentioned about Vladimir Putin right up front on the program. And, of course, uh, he has now taken control again, but not without opposition. And here you see it, Putin decoded. Now this article talks about his unyieldingness and worldwide view of Russia's ignomatic leader going on. Thousands protest. Putin inauguration. My, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that. Right, police? Break up anti-Putin protest in Russia. Putin foes fear they are in dangerous times. And awaiting the next revolution. Oh, my, oh, my. And Putin takes back Russia's nuclear button. He's got it in his hands. He says, Suitcase. that's where I want it, yes. And Russia does not rule out preemptive missile defense strike. Once again, now, I want to just say that Jack made what you're going to see on the screen right now. He told me that he gave this message in 1951, and it is, the coming war with Russia. My, oh, my. You know why he could do that in 1951? Because he took it out of the Bible. The Bible teaches there's going to be a huge, huge war with Russia. Now I'm going to ask Jack. Oh, Jack, I got so much here for you to cover. Uh, exactly, where does, what does the Bible teach about the future of Russia in that coming war? Rexella, I preached that in 1951. Many, many years ago, and never got it on record until 1969 when I preached the message for Dr. Jerry Falling. So if you don't put that on record, I'm going to record this morning's sermon, and I'm going to get uh, the profit from it for my ministry. Well, I made one in a hurry then. I have not changed a word. It's been right on for over 60 years. Now listen to me first. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, there's going to be a war of the latter years and latter days, Ezekiel 38, verses 8 and 16. And who is involved? Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh. Cities in Russia today. And Rosh is the word for chief prince. They made it an adjective. It should have been a noun. And Rosh is Russia in Greek and Russia in English. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be one of the greatest battles in history. The Bible teaches that even the Orient is going to come down. And here is Putin right now saying, because they've done away with the USSR, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, he wants to create another empire called Eurasian where he brings in the Orientals. It's happening. And that's Revelation 16, 12. When he opened the sixth year, there was a great uh, movement as they come from the east, the Oriental armies. And that could include many, many nations, including North Korea, India, God only knows. But the army is going to total 200 million, believe it or not. But they do not win. Ezekiel 39, verses 1 and 2. Behold, I'm against the Gog, the Russian prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. I'll turn you back and leave. But the six part of the five, six of their armies are going to fall. It's going to take every available man seven solid months just to bury the corpses, the dead that have fallen in the battle of Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, as recorded in Ezekiel 39. In fact, they're going to sever out men of continual employment in 39 verses 12 and 13. And they've used atomic weaponry because in 39 6, God says, I'm going to rain fire upon Gog of Magog. You also find that in Joel chapter 2. This is Russia. And they come down to Israel and fire devours before them. They're pushed back to Siberia, verse 20. And as they're being pushed back, the prophecies flood, fire, pillars of smoke, atomic warfare. And this also happens when China's with them. Because in Revelation 9, 18, and this is China now united with Russia, it says, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, the smoke, and the brimstone. But ladies and gentlemen, there's more. 
There's also going to be an Arab Federation united with them. In Isaiah 17, 1, we find that it's Syria. Daniel eleven forty, Egypt. And now that the brotherhood's in, taking over again and breaking the peace with Israel, it could happen very easily soon. And then when we get to Ezekiel 38, verse 5, Persia, as I said earlier, changed its name to Iran in 1935, and they are united with Russia and China. And then in the Hebrew, for this book was written in Hebrew, as far as the Old Testament is concerned, of Cush and Put, and that's Ethiopia, Libya, Yemen, that's Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, and Indonesia, all those nations. And then in Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7, we have Jordan and Lebanon, nations galore. And what for? They want to destroy Israel. Let us cast Israel off from being a nation. Psalm 83, verse 4. But they're going to fail because Yahweh God says, I'm going to make Israel stand forever. I will give them an everlasting name, Isaiah 56, 5. Rex, let us show us some of the nations that will be united with All Russia. All right, we'll go on very, very quickly here. And let's uh, show you the first one from the Jerusalem Post. And that is Russia and China going along with them. Arab Spring spins out of control. Here we see a revolution in Yemen. We're not finished yet. Nuclear meeting on the Middle East at risk. Iran may go nuclear later this year. Germany will not accept Iranian nuclear weapon. China ups the pressure to prevent a strike on Iran's nuclear there it facilities. Is. Yeah, Pakistan's nuclear weapons vulnerable to theft, the report says. Whoa. U.S. readies for spring clash with the Taliban. Now, here is Nolan Finley. He's putting his neck on the line because he's very close to a huge Muslim population here. And he's very upset about 9-11. Take a look. Bombs instead of bells on 9-11. What an article he wrote. Jack, would you like to read the article and comment? Please? This is dynamite. I've always thought the best way to honor the 3,000 who are murdered would be to drop 3,000 bombs on their murders. Guantanamo crowd. We ask our troops to win hearts and minds by sorting out the good guys from the bad while bullets are flying. In the process, we've given our tormentors another 6,200 victims, our soldier boys. So maybe we should leave now. And as we go, nail a note on the door that says, don't make us come back here. Because if we do, we'll flatten your miserable countries and everybody in them. Here is a man who is not afraid to speak up. So many are frightened. I told you a week ago that the head of the broadcasting system of England says, we are so afraid to say anything. We just had Jesus in diapers and nobody really complained. That's what's wrong with Christians. But he said, we would never do the same thing to Muhammad because we are frightened what they might do to us. And there are many Americans for the first time who are saying we're not going to continue putting up with this nonsense. So what are they doing about it? Just in Michigan alone, there are now 318,000 people with concealed weapons permits, not including the thousands of guns there at home because they are not afraid of what may come. And believe me, I just heard Feinstein say on Chris Wallace's show that America's in trouble and we got to prepare because danger is ahead. Mm. And you know, Jack, we've got to prepare for something else too. And that's for eternity. When the Lord comes back, are you ready to meet him? That's the reason we're in your home. We want you to be ready for the coming of the Lord. We want you to be ready for anything. How about your life? Are you really living for the Lord? Jack, will you give the invitation right now, please? Precious Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for your love for us. And Lord Jesus, I come to you now with an open heart that's moved because of your death on the cross to save me, shedding your blood to cleanse me. Jesus. At this very moment, I'm asking you to be my Savior. Come into my heart now. In your holy name, I pray this. 
Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust that you prayed that prayer with Jack. You opened your heart to the Lord and that now you are his child. You'll walk with him. Write to me. First steps in a new direction will be in the mail. As soon as I hear from you, walk with the Lord. He'll help you through any difficulty. Our offer of the week, Showdown with Iran, talking about everything in here that we've been explaining and elaborating on it. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Bob? To order your copy of the Showdown with Iran book with a bonus DVD, The Mideast Crisis, Can Israel Survive? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Oh, thank you, Bob. I do want you to have this in your home. It's so very important because, you know, the threat of war with Iran is growing every single day, and you need to know all the details. It's very, very thorough. You need to have this book. And I got a bonus for you. We're going to be talking about Israel also, as well as uh, the Mideast crisis. Oh, please, make the call or write to us, Showdown with Iran, and my bonus can Israel survive? Friends, do you ever feel burdened about everything going on in the world? I want to leave you with this thought. Earth has no sorrow that heaven does not feel. Oh, God feels it so much more than we do, and he's coming back to stop it all. Look forward to being your home again next week, and until then, remember, God cares for you, so do we. Bye-bye.